Hello everyone, my name is Chef Rob. You might recognize me from the Chef's Son. I've been in the food service industry for 30 years now, and I'm here to answer some of your culinary questions. My favorite place to find new recipes would be the internet, because you have worldwide access to a chef's anywhere in the world. Uh, when I started in this business, it was just cookbooks and a lot of magazines. We had the internet, but it wasn't as sophisticated as it is uh, today. So you can basically go into a kitchen in New Zealand, in Japan, in Mexico, in Egypt. So definitely the internet for me. If I could only eat one food forever, uh, it would have to be bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse is a French fish stew. Uh, it originated in Marseille off the Mediterranean, the south of France, basically had uh, whatever fish they fishermen caught that day, whether it was rockfish, clams, mussels, whatever, or whatever was not being sold. And uh, over the years, it has evolved into a, a very labor-intensive dish to execute, but it is delicious. It is so worth it. Uh, then uh, in a close second, uh, would have to be my mother's pollo guisado, which is a chicken and stew, Puerto Rican style chicken stew. It's my absolute favorite thing in the world to eat. Uh, but I wouldn't eat it every day because I would get tired of it. Okay, the question is when you make tuna, it comes out dry, and is there a method to make it softer? Sure, you're probably overcooking it, okay? Uh, what you want to do is you want to cook that tuna to a internal temperature of about 140 to 145 degrees. That's gonna put you into the me medium well temperature range. I want you to remember when you take the tuna off of the stove, off of the fire element, it's still cooking. That's called carry over cooking. By the time it gets to the table, it will continue to cook. So if you cook it to the well done stage, by the time it gets to the table, it will be overdone and be dry. So to give you uh, an idea, uh, start with two pieces of tuna, two tuna steaks, maybe four ounces each, uh, two tablespoons of olive oil, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and some ground pepper. You want to season the tuna on both sides. Heat up the, the uh, two tablespoons of olive oil or canola oil uh, on medium heat. And you want to cook them and brown them for about a minute or two minutes on each side. Just remember, it's going to be rare when you take it out, okay? Uh, use a food thermometer, and you're looking again for that temperature, uh, 140 to 145. I would say 143 would be good. Let me know how it works out. Okay, when did I know I wanted to become a chef? Well, I've always liked to serve people. I've always had that in me. Uh, since a young man. That's something that was instilled in me by my parents. So my parents do it, so I like to cater to other people, right? Uh, when I left the Marine Corps, I worked in the post office, uh, U.S. Postal Service, for about five years, and I did not like it. I was looking to do something different. So I think like in the early 1990s, I made that transition from the letter carrier, no offense to... Uh, Federal po uh, employ for federal postal employees, uh, but I, I went to uh, the Institute of Culinary Ed Education, put myself through school in the evening. So that was about about the time, more or less, uh, the the early nineties. Uh, the Food Network had just came out, so some of them, the people that inspired me at at that time was uh, Emeril Lagasse. You know, bam, uh, he was, bam, and uh, I liked his style. I could identify with him. He was a loud guy. He seemed like if he was from Brooklyn, so I liked him. You know, he had that boisterous personality about him, and the man could cook. So uh, he definitely was one of the very first people that inspired me to look into the food service industry. However, after I went to school and I, I, I trained as a French classic, I trained in French classical cuisine, I learned a lot more about uh, French cooking, and now my inspirations are Jacques Pepin, by far number one. Number two would be uh, Eric Repair, you know, from Le Bernardin, and unfortunately he's no longer with us, Anthony Bourdain. And those are my top three, and those are my go-to chefs. That's about it.
In my opinion, what is the most universal seasoning? I would have to say salt. I would have to say salt. Uh, kosher salt. All right. Uh, this is what it looks like This <laughs> when you buy it. Uh, this is what we use in professional kitchens and teaching kitchens. Okay. It's, it's a thick grain salt. You can feel it. You can feel the texture and you know how much you're putting in it. Uh, it, it is essential uh, in everything. Salt is a mineral. All right. Uh, sodium chloride. It uh, enhances everything, the flavor of everything. It's used to marinate. It's used to preserve food. It's used to extract uh, moisture from food. Uh, it's used to enhance the sweetness of sugar. Okay, it's not a very scientific thing. It's a cell protein that you have on your tongue that when you add salt to sugar, it enhances the sweetness of it. So it's used a lot in baking. So definitely salt and a very close second will be ground pepper. Those are essential for me. What is my favorite cooking gadget? Wow, man, there's so many tchotchkes out there, man. I have a lot of them in my drawers. Uh, but two of my favorites, okay, is a, is a channel knife. Okay, this is a channel knife and you use it to make uh, designs on the outside of food. Like this, I, it would be great if I had a cucumber, but I don't have one. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you on uh, this potato, okay? And what you do is you would run it through there and it makes these channel lines in there so you can decorate the outside of vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, it also has another small blade on the side where you can make long, uh, deeper cuts into there so i really like this uh and i also use this for as a zester for citrus and my other gadget i got this at a at a uh, bazaar at a food fair it's one of these little blades that they use to do uh p potato chips on a skewer i'll show you how it works it's so cool right so it's got like a little screw at the end and you just insert it on the top of the potato and you screw it in right to the bottom of the potato it takes it takes a takes a minute all right bear with me and right check this out right as it's going through it starts to slice the potato you just want to put a little pressure on it continue continue And that's what you get. So they put a, like a little skewer through it and they'll fry it up and it's like crunchy potato chips. So those are two of my gadgets. I like to do vegetables with these things uh, to enhance the presentation of a dish. They're fun. What are my kitchen essentials? <clears throat> uh, by far would have to be my chef's knife. Okay. Uh, uh, it's an extension of your hand. It's like... Uh, uh, a carpenter and his hammer or a musician and his instrument uh, so it would definitely be my chef knife it would be a fish spatula very easy to pick up fish without damaging it and it's also perforated so the oil stays inside of the pan bring out the fish you can pat it a little dry on the, on the side as well definitely a pair of tongs you can manipulate the food and the vegetables. And last but not least, a knife sharpener. You need to keep your blade nice and sharp. Uh, and also a paring knife. Okay, uh, this happens to be a global knife. It's Japanese made, it's super lightweight. So it's really easy to manipulate when you're dicing, not rather, rather not dicing, but manipulating vegetables. And uh, that's it, those are my essentials. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us and thank you for submitting your questions. I hope I was able to help you guys. Listen, if you like this video, please subscribe to Team Joystick and let us know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Happy holidays, everybody. What's that last thing I want to say? Please, if you like the video, please subscribe to Team Joystick and let us know. And let us know, and let us know. <laughs> you know what? Let me write this over here. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking bugging out now. And let us know. Let me write this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.